Hi, I'm Jim McKerney. Welcome to season five of Art and Technology, a space for innovative minds to spark equally fascinating conversations. In part one, I met Dan Ruzegaard, whose work using natural elements offers a positive outlook of the future and whose enthusiasm I found hopeful and inspiring. In part two, we'll meet Dan's friend and collaborator, the awesome Marianne van Aubel. Marianne is a solar designer whose work is helping to redesign how we approach sustainable energy. I'm prepared to be impressed. We've been talking about light, we've been talking about curiosity, we've been talking about future, right? And so, you know, then Marianne's name starts popping up very immediately. I say uh, light is power because I use the power of the sun uh, to activate objects, things, houses uh, by using sunlight. And what made you become a solar designer? Because, I mean, the sun is a very inspirational thing, but how does yeah. one get into that? Well, I think it's just by looking around and seeing a solar panel, which is a technology blue thing, just like like laying on a sort of a roof and then I thought okay that's you can we can do this much better than this technology just like slammed onto a building and not integrated into the architecture or the design of this building. Do you know how far away the sun is? So we have this planet earth and then we have the sun. I'm gonna like go how far away? with um, a million and two kilometers. <laughs> <laughs> It's today, eh, yeah. because it's moving in an ellipse, it's around, more or less, eh, 149 million kilometers away from us. Stop it! One thing that, that we learned from exploring space is the little we know about the world, ourselves, and the, the galaxy around us. And, uh, you know, switching off the lights in the cities and, and seeing the stars, the light speeding towards us 300,000 kilometers per second. It gives a sense of uh, connectivity, but also awe of the things we don't know yet. It sort of forces us to be curious again and, and humble, but most of all curious. I can imagine that you guys never get bored because you're inventive <laughs> in some ways. It must be kind of endless excitement. Not, not bored of what we're doing, but it's like, I mean, I wish I would be more bored more often. I would have more time to get bored because that's when, you know, you have space to create things. Designing is a big obstacle tour. You have to go to it underneath, <laughs> jump over things, and like the end, you get somewhere and you don't know what this obstacle tour will lead you to, but it's yeah, a lot of no's and you have to turn them to yeses. I think that's sort of our job both, that we have this crazy, radical, beautiful idea, this point on the horizon, and you sort of, you proclaim that as a story, as a dream, and then you go to the team and you say, okay, this is the story. I'm not sure what it is yet, but it has to be ready in four months. But Dan, yeah. how do you get it out of your head? You know what I do? I just tell everybody. Like, like when I have a new project, it's not secret. I, you know to how, whom I, I tell it? I can't imagine Text. Dan like, not telling everybody. We do have some questions from the audience. In the world of today, we're not curious. We're scared or either ignorant or we just don't talk about it at all. And, mm -hmm. But I think this, the, the project that I'm doing and that Marianne is doing is trying to sort of open up this notion of wonder and awe, and, and that's so incredibly needed in a time like this. I can't stress that enough. A great idea inspires, an amazing idea activates. Thank you, Marianne, and thank you, Dan. What a great conversation. My mind is suitably blown. And you know what? Circling back to Dan's statement about inspiring positivity about the future, I do actually feel a little bit more hopeful now, I've got to say. But how do you feel? What is your take on the transformative and uplifting nature of light? Hyundai Motor, connecting art and technology.